Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. For the longest time, one of my favorite Android devices for emulation has been the Nvidia Shield. But with all of these new emulators coming out that do require more CPU power, I've been looking for sort of a replacement for the gaming side of things because the Shield is still a great media playback device. I mean, you want to turn it into a little Plex server, it does 4K really well. But when it comes to gaming and emulation, the hardware is getting a bit dated. And something that's always upset me about the Shield is just the Android TV portion of everything. There's a lot of regular Android apps that I want to run on the big screen, and I just can't do it on the Shield. So I did some searching online, and I came across the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. I found a bunch of used ones in B-grade condition for around $230 on eBay, and I picked one up. There's a couple reasons I chose this device. First things first, the CPU. It's using the Snapdragon 865, and it does have more CPU and GPU performance than the X1 in the NVIDIA Shield. Real quick, I'll give you an idea of how much more. When it comes to Vulkan performance, they're really close. On the Shield, we got an 889. On the Galaxy S20 FE, 1167. This was using 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. But when it comes to OpenGL performance, the Galaxy is way ahead. Just running a quick benchmark Slingshot Extreme, which tests OpenGL 3.1 performance. On the Shield Pro, we got a 4057. On the Galaxy S20 FE, it maxed out, and I think that goes to 10,000 and then maxes out, but it's just telling me my device is too powerful for this test. So the Galaxy definitely beat the Shield in GPU performance, and when it comes to CPU performance, it's also way ahead. Geekbench 4, on the Shield, single core, 1433, multi, 4010. Just taking a look at the Galaxy FE 5G here, 4,256 on single, 13,341 on multi. So we do have a much more powerful device, and that was one of the big reasons I chose this. The second main reason I went with this device is it does support display over USB Type-C, and we have Samsung DeX built in here with this Samsung Galaxy device, which makes it really easy to connect it to a bigger monitor. So with the Galaxy S20 FE, we've got the Snapdragon 865, 6GB of RAM, 128GB of internal storage, plus micro SD card support. It runs Android 12 with One UI 4.0, and this does support Samsung DeX up to 1440p. I completely understand that this isn't going to be for everybody. There is some tinkering involved to get this up and running properly. And uh, with the Shield, if you're just using it for video playback, there's no reason to upgrade. But if you're looking for a performance bump in native Android gaming, and especially emulation, then something like this actually might work out for you. And with the recent release of the Galaxy S22, prices on the S20s and the S20 FEs are going down. So in order to get this connected to my external display, I use a cheap HDMI to USB Type-C adapter. It also has a couple USBs built in and it supports charging. There's tons of these on Amazon. You can also go with a dock. This is the B-Link dock. It's actually a really great device. It does support up to 4K, but with this, we only need to output up to 1440p. Most people might only be working with 1080. But to get out really cheap, I just went with a little adapter here, HDMI to USB Type-C, and it does work out really well. All right, so I've got my monitor set up, and I'm just using this little B-Link as a stand. You can also pick up a cheap $3 stand on Amazon. I've got this set up, so as soon as I plug it in, it's going to come up with Samsung DeX on the second monitor. So right now, I can use Samsung DeX on the big monitor and Android on the smaller monitor. Now you can also just mirror the phone screen to the external display and it's just going to give you a basic Android interface. And as you can see, we're in portrait mode now on the external monitor, but once we start up an app or game that supports landscape, it'll swap over on the big monitor or your big screen. And you can always install a third-party app like Rotation Control to get it in landscape mode at all times. But I personally prefer using Samsung DeX. And with this, it does support remotes. You can use a Bluetooth remote or something with a dongle. You can use a mouse, keyboard, or even a controller, be it Bluetooth or USB. Or even if you have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle on your controller, you can plug it right into one of the free USB ports. This is just a Bluetooth controller here, and it's connected up, and this is what I play my games with. All right, so we've got it all set up here, and one thing that I've noticed with the latest versions of Android and Samsung DeX is we actually have the ability to go up to 1440p. In the past, we were kind of stuck at 1080p or even 900p for a 16x9 screen. And even with these new versions, we have a 16x10 option, and we also have an ultra-wide option at the very bottom here. So that's really awesome. No matter what monitor you have, this will work with it. When it comes to using Samsung DeX as your desktop, we do have multi-window support, multi-app support, and there's even a snap feature built in. 
So if I want to go ahead and open up several apps at one time, I'll just find a few here to get open. We can have them all running at the same exact time. And remember, we're running Dex over here on the external display, but we can still access Android on the phone screen. And real quick, I'll give you a look at that snap feature because this does come in really handy. We can take it over to the left hand side here. We can take one over to the right hand side. And overall, in the last few updates, I mean, they've definitely improved navigation performance and just overall UI performance with Samsung DeX. And when it comes to HD content, it does work inside of DeX. Since we have a Samsung phone, we do have Widevine Level 1, which is the highest level we can go. So in your favorite streaming apps, we can go to HD, even in Samsung DeX. If you want to do Netflix, HBO. Hulu, and even YouTube. Now with most devices nowadays, with the latest versions of YouTube, we can get HD content. And even though we're only running this at 1440p, I still wanted to turn this to a 4K 60fps video to show you how well it performs. And the Snapdragon 865 can definitely handle 4K video playback. I really wish we had a 4K option here with Samsung DeX, but 1440 still looks really good. And I do have Stats for Nerds running in the top left hand corner. We'll get a bit closer real quick so we can check it out. If we take a look right here, our drop frames is sitting at 14 out of 3,000. This was basically on the initial load in. And by the end of this video, I only had 18 drop frames. So we did get a couple more, but this is running at 4K 60. Our viewpoint is set at 1440p. Now it's time to take a look at some native Android gaming. And for this one here, I'm just going to go to Epic Settings, 60 FPS. This is a port, and uh, I think they did a really good job with Android, and as you can see, it's running really well at Epic settings. I don't think we're quite at 60. Going down to high might be the way to go, but this is perfectly playable in my opinion. I think we're around 50 FPS, maybe 45 to 50. Dropping it down to medium and high will get you up to 60 with this one, but that's on the Snapdragon 865. Here's Asphalt 9, and again, I'm playing with a Bluetooth controller. This is a game that's been on the market for a little while, but they're constantly updating it, and performance has gotten much better, even on lower-end devices. But something like this, I mean, it looks really, really good on this display. So as a lot of us already know, there's a bunch of games on Android that don't natively support controllers. You can always use a controller mapper. Here we have Genshin Impact running at medium settings, and I'm using the Mantis controller mapper. Unfortunately, the Mantis Mapper doesn't work in DEX mode, it just won't let me launch it. So I did have to mirror the screen, we're losing a bit of that real estate on the top and bottom. But it does work out like this, and as soon as Genshin Impact really adds controller support for Android, this will work in DEX mode just fine. I mean, we can start it up, but we just can't connect a controller in DEX mode yet. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and this is really where it's at when it comes to DEX mode or just basically any Android device that supports HDMI out. Here we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator at 2560 by 1920, and we're getting full speed. With the Snapdragon 865 and the S20 FE, we're not going to have any trouble with Dreamcast. Moving over to PSP, here we have it running, Vulcan back in, 3x resolution, standalone version of PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus running at full speed, and when it comes to the easier to emulate PSP games, you can go all the way up to 8x with something like Family Guy or even Daxter. It runs really well, especially at a higher resolution. I also wanted to throw a little bit of Sega Saturn. For this, I'm using the Yobase and Shiro Core inside of RetroArch, but if it comes down to it, you can always use the standalone version of Yobase and Shiro. I've actually had really good luck with the standalone version, but I already loaded up RetroArch and it was right here. Now with the Snapdragon 865, moving up to Wii and GameCube, this is where you'll start to see it struggle with certain games. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of games that this little phone can handle, and especially with those latest updates to the Dolphin emulator, we do have a Snapdragon CPU with that Arduino GPU, so OpenGL performance has definitely been increased, and there's a lot of stuff that runs, but you're not going to be able to get every single game to run at full speed on a device like this. And finally here, PS2 using EtherSX2, We've got Sly Cooper, it's at 1x resolution, OpenGL, and we're getting really good performance. I can actually go up to 2x, but I do have some dips every once in a while, so I just dropped it right back down. And it's not bad at all. Again, when it comes to a higher-end emulator like this, you're not going to be able to run every single PS2 game at full speed. 
but there's a lot of stuff that's going to work great. And remember, Ether SX2 is still in heavy development, so it will increase down the road. But right now, we are getting some pretty decent performance with the Snapdragon 865. Here's Gran Turismo 4 at 2x using the OpenGL backend. So we're definitely getting better gaming and emulation performance with this device versus the Nvidia Shield, but one thing that the Shield's got going for it is just the Android TV interface. It's a lot easier to navigate with a remote or a controller, and I've actually been using the Nvidia Shield in my living room for about three years. Never had any issues with it, but most of the time what I'm doing on it is just watching videos, and the built-in stuff on my big screen TV already does that, be it a Roku TV, Amazon, or even an Android TV. But what I was looking for was something with a little more power for emulation and gaming, and I definitely found it with the Snapdragon 865. It is a bit more expensive. You have to do a little bit of tinkering to get everything set up correctly, but it does work in the end. I mean, we're getting much better performance than the X1 in the Shield can put out right now with the Snapdragon 865. I know it's not for everybody, but I do have a lot of viewers that love to tinker, and they might be interested in something like this. So I will leave a few links in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, thanks for watching.